Hi there, welcome to Floating in Dreams. This video we will be reviewing all three of the new Catrice Pro Slim eyeshadow palettes. Welcome to everybody watching today. Thank you so very much for joining me. This video is going to focus on the three new eyeshadow palettes that Catrice has released in their spring summer collection for 2024. These look very similar to some of the older palettes they did, so we are going to be comparing them to the older palettes as well. And I'm going to be doing a look with each one of these on camera so you can see how these apply. Before we get into the video though, it may be good to know who I am and what I like doing on this channel if you've never been here before. Hi, my name is Micah. I live in the Netherlands. I have fair skin with a cool to neutral undertone and this greatly influences how I feel about makeup. I have been reviewing makeup for more than a decade. I love trying eyeshadow palettes, Essence and Catrice and getting the use out of my makeup. So if that's something you're interested in, then I hope you'd like to consider subscribing. Before we get to the makeup, I have to do a short announcement. I am suffering from hay fever really, really badly this week. So if I sound raspy or if my eyes are overly puffy, that's why. My eyes have been super irritated through the past few days. So I waited as long as I could to film this video, but I just need to get it out of the way. So if my eyes start to look really red and irritated throughout this video, if I start doing this, these makeup looks and I'm taking them off, that could be why, just a heads up. Um, but yeah, Catrice came out with three new eyeshadow palettes. We have the Safari Fever, which is a like cocky with warm tone color story. We have Blooming Bliss, which is like your rosy tones, very sort of modern renaissance meets Huda Beauty-esque, I feel. And then we have Coral Crush, which is like your warm tones with a pop of blue. That's really how it works. However, I already said it in the intro, Catrice used to do a line that looks very similar. And I have three palettes by the same brand that look eerily similar to what these three palettes have to offer. So these with the window, are the new ones and the old ones looked like this. These were the Pro Slim eyeshadow palettes and these are just called the Slim palettes. Um, I filmed a couple of cutaways and like B-roll to show you all the comparative swatches. So I wanna talk about that first and then we'll do the looks. So first up, I wanna compare the um, Slim palette in Safari Fever to the Pro Slim palette in Natural Spirit. So both of these have a more like cocky with warm tone color stories and something that really stood out to me as I was swatching all of these palettes side by side is that the newer range seems to have a little bit more variation in the colors that are in the palette and they also seem to be a little bit more saturated. I don't want to call them deeper but especially this comparison here I just feel we get some shades in here that are a little bit more saturated, but this has better contrast between light and dark. So the older palettes go deeper, but the newer palettes have more mid-tones in them because the old palettes, a lot of people were criticizing them for how light these were, and you do get a lot of light shades in this one as well. So the Safari Fever and the Pro Slim in Natural Spirit. Ooh, I'm sticking my finger in, oh no. I knew this was going to go wrong. This is why I filmed B-roll, so I wouldn't risk my myself sticking my finger in. But here you can see them again side by side. You can also see this in the, cl the close-up that I filmed before sitting down to film this video, but you can see these are very similar. And I definitely don't think that if you already own Natural Spirit that you need to go out and run out and buy the Safari Fever. What I do have to say, though, is that I feel they've changed the formula. The formula of the old palace felt very thin, and you need a, needed a lot of building up for it to look nice. But with the Safari Fever and also the other new palettes, I feel we just get better swatches. The pigment seems to be easier to get to almost. These are a lot smoother, I feel, and they're far more consistent as well throughout the palette. With the old palettes, like some shades were fine and then others felt really thin and you couldn't really do much with them. But with these, I feel it's very consistent. So I do feel, because these still retail for the same price point, even though the color stories may not be new and exciting, I do feel we get a different formula in these. The packaging looks and feels cheaper, but the formula we get inside does feel a little bit better than in the old version. Secondly, we have the pinky tones, and here I feel we get the biggest difference between the old and the new palette. 
The Pro Slim was the Next Gen Nudes, and the new one is called Blooming Bliss. And when I hold these up next to each other, you will be able to tell that Blooming Bliss is much darker and much more warm toned than the old version. So if you have a cooler undertone, or maybe if you have fair skin, the bottom one would have been a bit better if you missed out on it. I'm terribly sorry. I don't think you can still get these. Maybe if you're in a different territory than the Netherlands and Germany, you might still be able to pick up the old ones because I know that Catrice can take a while for, you know, for them to be releasing all of their products around the globe. But yeah, if you prefer your cool tones, then I feel the bottom one is better. The top one is definitely more saturated. It's deeper and it has a lot more warmth. It also has a duochrome, which is very exciting, I think. And finally, last but not least, from the Pro Slim, we used to have the Hint of Mint, which is one of my favorites from the line, and the Coral Crush is sort of what's new. And here again, I feel we get more of a blend of colors, like with the Natural Spirit Safari Fever comparison. Um, in the Hint of Mint, it's all pretty one, low, one note and quite cool toned, actually. You just have these reddy, reddish tones here. And the new Coral Crush, um, hence the name, I think, uh, has a little bit more peachy coral to it. So I feel this is more neutrally brown, the old one, and this one has more coral peach. I do feel, though, that the colorful shades in the Coral Crush swatched a lot better and they show up a lot better. And also, uh, it's more blue leaning, and in the Hint of Mint, it's more green leaning as well. So there are slight differences, which is why... When I started swatching them side by side, I could really tell this difference. But when I first got these new palettes in, I was like, what did they do? They just re-released the old palettes, but in different packaging. What's going on there? Um, but as I just mentioned, I do think they have changed the formula, which is why I'm super excited to put all three of these onto my eyes for you in this video as well, so that you can really see how these go on. I'm gonna do a look with every single one of them so we can really test out this formula and I will give you an update after every single palette that I try. Since I wanna do this in the order of appearance, we're gonna kick things off with the Safari Fever, and I think what I wanna do is like center it around this darker green. I think it will go with my shirt really nicely today. Um, and I do think what this palette is missing that the old one had is a matte green to match this. I think that if we would get that like darker cocky green in this in this palette, I think I would have liked it a lot better. Instead, we just get like oranges, which I'm a huge fan of. So probably gonna stay away from the orange, but I'm gonna stick more so to like this side of the palette, I think. And here is what the finished look looks like with the Safari Fever. And I have to say, this blends like a dream, um, especially for the 10 euros, maybe 12. Maybe they've upped the prices a little bit because Catrice is getting more and more expensive over time as well. But the old price point was like 10 euros and now these are still around the same price point, I believe. And I think that this is really nice. The only shade that was a bit of a letdown is the shade Cactus that can only really be applied with like a very fine, very dense brush. Um, I don't think you'd have a very pleasant time using this all over your lid if that's what you're looking for. Um, I ended up doing a look with Savannah in the Crease, which is this shade here. That's like the blend shade here. I use a little bit of Earth to deepen up like the outer corner here. Um, I use a little bit of Nature, which looks like a taupe in the pan but it turned out to be like this light gold shade. I do really like it. It's like a gold with a bit of green running through it, but it's very different from what I feel it looks like in the pan. Not sure how I feel about that. And then on the lower lash line, I went in again with Savannah and a little bit of Cactus, and I used a little bit of this shade Spirit in my inner corner, and I had no issue throwing this together. It's quick and easy. It's blendable eyeshadow where with the old formula, I felt it would sometimes blend away once you started blending. 
I felt this didn't really work. Oh, and I used a little bit of the light, which is this shade here to sort of like blend out the edges and making sure there were no harsh lines. And I think this is a really nice everyday makeup look. Um, I would definitely wear this again. Um, but if I ever use this palette again, I would definitely stay away from some of these orangey tones. They're just not my favorites, but I know a lot of people do like warm tones. So if you prefer a warm tone, this may be a nice one from the drugstore. It has some really stunning shades and I feel this can look very glam. It can look a little bit more intense as well. So what I'm missing in this palette though is a cocky green and something a little bit darker. Um, so in the original palette, we get both of those shades. So we get this darker cocky green shade and we also get a, gr a dark brown right here together. And I feel like this palette is missing that level of depth that you can really do a very glam look. But if you're looking for something that's neutral and great for every day, I think this has a lot to offer no matter what you like in terms of makeup. You can do something really soft and natural, but you can also amp it up to have it a little bit more glam. I'm pretty sure if you were to pull in these reddish tones here that you can very easily do a more glam look. In a way, it kind of reminds me, like color story wise, it reminds me of the Anastasia Soft Glam if it had a cocky green in. I'm not sure if I'm making sense, but that's how I feel about this one. Palette number two is the Blooming Bliss. As I mentioned, this looks a little bit deeper. It has a weird putty shade in, in case you didn't know. Um, that is like that Huda Beauty sort of like ball thing that she did in a couple of palettes. I think it was like the Naughty Nude. And also in the Rose Quartz, you have this putty shade, which I tried to mash together. So we got some of the pigment, which it seems to work just fine. I'm most excited for this shade here, which is like a pinky duochrome kind of thing. Um, it does have some cooler tones, mainly on this side of the palette. So I might stick to that. Um, but this has some really pretty rosy tones. So I'm pretty excited for this one. Again, the formula on all three of these felt the same. So I'm very curious to see how this goes once I put it on my eyes. So let's do the eye look. And here is what Blooming Bliss looks like on me. I didn't plan these looks at all in advance. I just looked at the palette right now. I was sitting down and I was like, you know what this calls for? A bit of a halo eye moment. So that's what we went for. I could have perhaps done a little bit more on the lower lash line because I feel that that's a little barren. So let me, let me take one of the lighter shades just to blend out this bottom lash because that's now not like the most aesthetic and I don't like to put too much darkness here because I really feel it closes in my eyes but yeah this is a really pretty palette now that I've done the look you know what this color story reminds me of Natasha Denona retro that's that's what this is giving it's like warmer toned pinky plums I'm here for it I really really enjoy this so what I ended up doing is I used the shade violet in my crease as a bit of a blend shade just to set up a look I always start with that because I feel that that's way that's the way for me to get a feel for my eyeshadow placement and where I want things to go um, and then I decided to go a bit rogue and use a bit of grape which is not a shade I had anticipated before I would use um, but I use that to set up the outer and inner edges of the halo and then, of course, I had to go in with this stunner of a shade. This is the shade Peony. This is that duochrome kind of shade. It looks, pe it looks peachy pink in the pan, but then when I apply it, it has this really nice, vibrant, lilac, lavender kind of flash. It's definitely really pretty. I really feel that the way, like, whichever way my head catches the light, you get a bit of pink or peach or you get a bit of lavender. Really special to have a shade like this in a drugstore palette. I did have to go in with my finger with the peony shade. It was a little bit thin, so it wasn't best with a brush, maybe if you were to wet it. I don't love applying my eyeshadows wet. I just use my fingers because I always feel the warmth of my fingers help any sort of shimmer out. So 
that's what I ended up doing with this shake peony, which is in the middle of that halo. I used a little bit of water lily because I wanted to keep like the pinky purple vibes going and this is like a very soft lilac for the inner corner and then I used a little bit of that deeper shade on the outer edge because it was a little bit bare there and I didn't want to go in with something too light so to still have a bit of a smoky vibe I used that on the outer corner this is called Colibri? Colibri? I don't know how to pronounce that word in English so I do apologize I used this also a little bit on the lower lash line and then I used a little bit of bloom on the lower lash line as well and then I blended out the lower lash line just now with a bit of hibiscus so Blooming Bliss, I it may have to be my favorite of the three. Like if one of these makes it into my makeup collection, it would be this one. But I have so many rosy toned eyeshadow palettes that I know I don't need this, but the way this looks look has turned out has me very, very happy. So yes, Blooming Bliss, super easy to create a look with. Again, like with the uh, Safari Fever we just used, you can do something really basic and everyday with this as well. Like I went a little bit more glam for this one, but for instance here, this shade Moonflower, which looks really, really stunning, more of like a champagne-y taupe. Um, you get something like a little bit more rosy in here as well. I haven't even gone into that. And like also this Dahlia shade would go with it really nicely. Um, so yeah, you've got some lighter things in here, but for my fair skin, this definitely turns out to be pretty glam because I feel that this one is the most intense one of the three where you really get enough like darker shades to deepen something up like I did today. And there is like, it's like a 50-50 split with these. At least with this one, I feel we, we get some cool tones and we also get some warm tones, but because they're very dispersed over the entire palette, you don't realize it at first. But I love how that peony shade is actually quite cool toned. And I like how grape, even though it has a hint of red and pulls a little bit more warm toned on me, goes really well with these like plummy, purpley leaning shades. Really loving this look for sure. All right, so that brings us to our final palette, which is the Coral Crush. And I think that with this, I just want to go for the classic. I just, I'm just going to do like a neutrally brown eye on top and then use the blue shimmer on the lower lash line. That's just a classic go, like whenever I look at a palette like this, that's like the instant thing I wanna do. As I mentioned, this does have some like corally things compared to the original um, Hint of Mint, which I don't think I'll be using those, but you know, you do get something that is a little bit more pink leaning as well. So the true, true warmth comes from like these two shades here and this peach here, but everything else, seems to be pretty okay and i can't wait to try to shade jellyfish here which seems to be a bit like peony in the blooming bliss where it again has like this duochrome effect so i i can't wait to see what that that's gonna do and i think i want to pull in the bronze as well um like a nice summery sort of glam look that's that's what i want to do so uh let me get to coral crush And that is the final look done with the Coral Crush. And I, don't, I can't pick you guys, help me out. Is this your favorite? Because I also really like the Blooming Bliss, but I also really like how this came together. Um, it's really nice and shimmer heavy, and I really, really enjoy the way these uh, shades came together. Even though color story wise, this was the one I was the most nervous for at the start because it looks so warm toned in the pan, especially when I swatched it. it looks so peachy coral. Of course, I stayed away from like the two most obvious peachy shades, but overall, I felt this looked really, really, uh, this, this look came together really, really well. Very easy blendable formula on all three of these. I'm very, very impressed with the new formulation. 
even though these color stories may not be that exciting, boy, the way these blend, that they don't fade, and that they just don't, like, they just don't look the way those other shadows did. They, the formula has really been updated, and I think that they did a good job there, and especially because these still retail for around the same price point. I mean, the way these go on, it's as smooth and blendable as some of my favorite Couture shadows in the Falling Colors. I feel like they've put that formula into these palettes. I'm not entirely sure, of course, but I have said how that palette from Catrice definitely doesn't feel like it's from the drugstore, and even though these have really cheap packaging, I feel that the end result and the way these go on with brushes really don't feel as affordable as they are. What did I end up doing for this look? I used a little bit of Beach Flirt, which is this rosy tone, uh, and that's what's in the crease. And then I went straight into the sh shade Treasure, um, because I decided to do this, like, like smoky wing, as I like to call it. So what I've what I've been liking to do, I've been playing around with my eyeshadow shapes a little bit again, um, is that I used that crease shade and sort of like took it further than my brow so that I would have something for this to sort of cross-sect. And then I sort of swept that shadow onto the lid to create a diagonal line, which I reinforced with a little bit of this matte shade. This is Reef, and that's a little bit of the liner that I used. And then I just I just wanted to go in with Jellyfish, as I said. It's not duochrome per se, but it's such a pretty sparkle. And it's great, because it has the same sort of base tone as Bliss to it, but then with a lot of, like, golden particles. It doesn't look like a metallic. It looks like particles. It does look like actual, like, you can see the little shimmers. But, yeah, this looks really, really nicely on. Um, I used a little bit of Coast to um, round out the inner corner, and of course, a little bit of deep dive. The blue is on the lower lash line. I do feel with this blue, you have to be very careful, um, because there are very few shades that this can blend into very nicely without it looking muddy. So I definitely feel it happened a little bit on this eye, where the blue doesn't look as vibrant as it does on this eye, because I had already applied a little bit of treasure to sort of connect that outer corner to that sweep. And I feel I went a little too heavy onto that lower lash line, and then this shade just doesn't go with it very well, so that was user error more so. I would love to do a wear test for you with this, so I, I'm gonna see how this wears throughout the day. I do have a party to get to tonight, so I'm not sure how long this eye look is gonna last, whether I'm gonna update you before I go to the party, or afterwards, I don't know, but this is gonna be on, I'm gonna be filming some other videos, and then we'll see how it wears. Now, I do have to say something before we get into the wear test, is that this eyeshadow is now not primed the way I usually did, because I did three looks back to back. So the only thing that's now holding this in place is my MAC Paint Pot, and that is a little bit more prone to creasing on my lids than uh, when I do the Kiko Milano Neutral Eye Base with the Paint Pot on top. So I'm definitely very curious to see how this wears. I feel that eyeshadow by itself never wears well on my eyelids. I need a primer to make it stick. So just so you know, before we go into this wear test, that if this starts to crease terribly, it could just be the lack of primer. So, but I do want to throw it in here because I'm going to go about my business for the rest of the day. So that's something that I can definitely also update you in this video. So I will be back in a few hours to let you know how this looks. I'm not sure what time it is right now, but I started filming this around 10 a.m. in the morning. So um, it, it, it's probably like 11, 10, somewhere between 10.30 and 11. So I'm going to give it a good amount of time, like six to eight hours for sure. So maybe I'll update you around dinner time and we can have a look together. So this is the quick little check-in to see how this eyeshadow wore throughout the day. And my hay fever has been acting up all day, so my eyes were super watery. And for how watery they've been, I feel this eyeshadow still looks pretty good. I mainly have issues with watering here on the outer corners, so that's where I have been like tapping my eyes so that there's no eyeshadow left there. But I feel I don't experience any creasing up here. So even though I didn't do the priming of my eyes the way I normally would, 
I feel this held up really well. It's around 6.30. By the time this was on, it was around 11. So this has been on for seven plus hours. I filmed some other videos. I've been going about my day and it's still looking really, really nice for how long it's been on, etc., etc. So the blue is still there. Yeah, this is some really nice eyeshadow from Catrice, you guys. It's long wearing, it blends easily. It's got some really pretty textures in. I'm very happy with this new line of eyeshadow palettes by Catrice. This is wear test update number two. It is past midnight at the minute. I'm in my bathroom because I just got home from a dance party. And because this eyeshadow is still on, 12 plus hours after I have first applied it. And after having been dancing my little tush off all night long, I got sweaty, I got gross. This makeup needs to come off. The only thing I did to touch up my makeup this before I left the house was to put on a different lipstick and that's all I did. And for how long this has been on, like there's a little bit of creasing right here in the inner corner, I'm not sure if you can see. It's probably not light enough in here to really show you that kind of detail, but the blue is still there. Like I've lost a little bit of the inner corner highlight, which I think, you know, makeup is going to smudge. It's, it's not going to look pretty 12 plus hours later, but I experienced very little creasing with this. So good job, Catrice. I need to go to bed. So that was my review of all three of the new Catrice slim eyeshadow palette line. I still want to call them the Pro Slims. Um, cheaper packaging for sure, but definitely an updated formula that feels much better and much more high-end than the old palettes used to feel. Those were a little thin, they blended away, and it didn't really build up very well. Whereas with this, I feel really, really great. So uh, I hope it wears well as well. I'm filming this ending to the video before I film the uh like i'm filming the outro to this video before i've, I've been able to film the wear test um but yeah these look really lovely are the color stories revolutionary and something different from catrice no they're not but if you're looking for great shadow at an affordable price point then i think these can definitely see you through the um through the day so thank you so very much for joining me here today thumbs up this video if you liked it if you want to see more ssi catrice videos by me then definitely stay tuned because i have at least one more video coming your way and i've done first impressions with all of the new ssn catrice products so i'll make sure to link those in the description box down below and i'm currently reviewing a lot of those products over on my blog as well so you can find that link in the description box down below as well and by the time I've reviewed all of the new products I'm gonna do a roundup video where I talk about all of those things and if you want to know what's on my face it was a lot of those new Essence and Catrice products as well so make sure you check out the description box because I always list everything that's on my face in every single video I film so yes, thank you so very much for being here today. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more by me. I really hope you got something out of this video today. And for now, I would like to wish you a great day. Take care, and then I hope to see you in my next video. Bye-bye.